Nine, live from Television City in Hollywood. Playhouse 90, brought to you by Allstate, the company with more than four million policyholders who have discovered that you're in good hands with Allstate. By Renault and the Dauphine, the car made in France to make your driving fun again. And by your gas company in cooperation with gas producers, pipeline companies, and gas appliance and equipment manufacturers who bring the modern miracles of gas service to your home. In just one minute, act one of The Killers of Mussolini. Today, more people than ever are cooking with gas. Here's Julia Need to show you why. You know, one reason gas cooking is so exciting is this shining Gold Star Award, the world's newest emblem of excellence. The Gold Star assures you of at least 28 up-to-date improvements, which make gas cooking even faster, cleaner, and cooler than ever before. For example, everything lights automatically, and the amazing gas burner with a brain regulates itself so food can't scorch or burn. There are other features, like a rotisserie in the waist-high broiler and an automatic meat thermometer in the oven. And every inch is a cinch to clean. Another Gold Star must. The stunning Norge gas range is a perfect example of Gold Star quality. Visit your gas company or appliance dealer and see why today more people than ever are cooking with gas. Get that truck unloaded. Hurry up and get those boxes on that crate. Hurry it up. Bad Borsani. I wish you had eyes to see this treasure. It's some sight. I can hear it. From personal property, German government funds, gold bullion, and foreign currency, a total of almost $60 million. But Zerbino, what can it buy the Duce now? He might buy a great deal for him. Those fools up there would only leave him alone. His ministers. Without them, he could make up his mind. Make up his mind. You make it sound so easy. Have you ever seen the fox when the hounds have him cornered? He keeps running, but his cleverness doesn't help him anymore. They just turn him and turn him and turn him until he's dead in his tracks. Bella warned me last week the partisan uprising will definitely begin today. Now, if we remain here in Milan, there is no question about it. We are going to be attacked. We are going to have to defend ourselves. What's wrong with that? I think we could hold out until the Americans arrive. I agree with Marshal Gaziani. Delay until the Americans Well, you start. don't think the partisans can bomb us out of here? <laughs> the only sensible thing to do is to regroup our forces in the mountains. Have you any idea, Paolini, what is the status of our mountain units? Can we march off on guesswork? Oh, your son, General Graziani. All your advice is do nothing, give in, surrender. The amateur military expert. <clears throat> All right, Marshal Graziani, feared lion of Nigelli. What campaign do you have for us, huh? Go nowhere? <laughs> do nothing? Oh, 
There's a battle cry. Listen, Pauline. We know why you want to run up in the mountains and hide. You know what they call you here in Milan? The butcher. The butcher of the Black Brigade. Well, go on, hide, butcher. I don't ask for company. Ratiani, shut up. Never of come. Pauline. Pauline. I get you an army, don't you? They're all black shirts. It's decided. 3,000 black shirts, and we withdraw to the mountains. Where, Excellency, are the 3,000? You don't sit when the duty stands. I'm sorry, it's fatigue, not lack of respect. Black shirts against these partisan peasants. It could be a glorious stand. As Marshal of the Army, Duce, I can assure you, we have no contact with any group of 3,000. 1,000, then? 1,000 black shirts could do it. I'm sorry to say I couldn't even find you 100. Our communications is gone. Zervino. As Minister of the Interior, Interior, you have a plan of action. I suggest that we retreat to Germany to unite whatever forces we have with the Nazis. Marshal Graziani says we have no forces. We have forces. I say they are not organized and there is no time. Where are the Americans? Forty miles from Milan, but their tanks move slowly. Hey, where's Mr. Soma? I sent him to Cardinal Schuster hours ago. Do you? What, Basti? I think we should make our stand right here in Milan. There are black shirts all over the Don't city. Count on the Once black it started, fight. they would fight. What we should do is wait and stall until no, the Americans no, no, come. No, no, we are better off in the mountains. Valtellina, no matter how few we have. What do you want us to do? Surrender here to, to street riffraff? It's better to die fighting. Heroes in the mountains. You die. Bravo, bravo, Paolini. Marshal Graziani is right. The things you've done to them, your secret police and your torches, no wonder you want to die a hero. Oh, gee, you were the one who told me I was too soft with them. I didn't make them talk. I can only tell you, Pavolini, that when I saw what you and your men did in the prison in Rome, I was deeply shocked. I told you, Duce, I gave you reports. You congratulated me on the confessions. I like the results, but your methods of obtaining them were barbarous. And don't forget, you gave me my own division as reward. When will you give up, Butcher? I warn you, Grazia. All right, all right. So what advice do I have for my ministers? Baraku suggests that we surrender to the Americans if we can wait that long. Pavolini wants a magnificent stand at Valtellina, and he says he can get 3,000 black shirts, which Marshal Graziani says we do not have. On the other hand, Marshal Graziani wants to hold out here in the Prefettura. Zerbino suggests a retreat to Germany, and Bassi is sure that we can hold Milan, and I am supposed to make sense of all of this, huh? Hey, you think like women at a card party. Uh, now comes new advice, Senor Mezzasoma. What does the Cardinal propose for the salvation of Mussolini? Cardinal Schuster has arranged a, a meeting between you and General Cadorna of the Partisans in the palace at five o'clock today. Cadorna, that pig! You expect me to sit at a table with that communist pig? But you wanted to arrange it? I course. talked with no one but the Archbishop, an honorable Catholic. Not with gutter assassins, not the Duce. There'll be no truce meeting, inform the Cardinal. Where are the Americans now? The latest report puts them at 40 miles from here. Latest me. report? That's what you said hours ago. Duch, I can only repeat. What, are they to having you? a picnic? The tanks move, don't they? Wouldn't they be 39 miles? Maybe 38. Even if there were 20, the partisans wouldn't wait. All right. We go to Germany. I and Hitler will join hands. We will stand together and fight to the last. That's what history expects of us. That's all for now. You'll wait for further instructions. Why aren't you at Como with your mother? Because I'm worried about you, Baba. Look, I've just come from the airport. I spoke with General Bononi. Now, he tells me there's an FM-79 in flying condition. And there's a pilot and gasoline. Baba, you can get to Germany or to Spain. But you must hurry now. The plane must take off in one hour. Papa, coming here to the streets just now, I, I could smell the trouble boiling. Nobody asked you to interfere. You're supposed to be up north. I know, Papa, but I can't leave you here alone. All right, you won't take the plane. Will you please do me one favor? Will you please try to save yourself? Papa, listen to me, please. Papa, look. Look about. A friend of mine has a little apartment in Bellagio. You can hide there. I have the key. My car is downstairs. You can leave by the back way and nobody will see you. 
The streets are all deserted now. The shops are closing. Papa, you can hide in the apartment, you see? And then, then when the Americans arrive, I'll arrange for them to meet you there. Thank you, son, for caring so much. But I can't go and hide when so many depend on me. I know, Papa, but the faithful ones will understand. They want your safety above all. That's not important. I think of the loyal soldiers of the Black Brigades, who at this moment are defending our land foot by foot. For their sake, I must go to Valtellina and make a last stand before I go to Germany and join with Hitler. With Hitler? Do you think Hitler cares what happens to you, Papa? I am the captain of the fascist ship, Vittorio. And when it sinks, I will be the last one on the bridge. Now, you go to your mother and you tell her that I said that if she and the children get to Switzerland, they will grant her asylum. Papa, will you... Are you alone, Excellency? Vittorio's about to leave. Papa, will you please no. listen? Switzerland. What do you think, Bosani? If I can get on Swiss land, they would have to intern me. Months will pass before they decide what to do with me. Right? But how do you get to the border? You must pass through towns like Como and Dongo, where the partisans are strong. They're already taking over. What if they catch you along the way? Yes. There is that. Perhaps if I surrender here in Milan, they would intern me in the Cardinal's quarters, and I'll wait there until the trial. Maybe that's the best thing to do. Right? You, Bosani. With your blind eyes, you're the only one who sees. Jenna, you stay here. But, Lucia, I want to hand you Lieutenant Alfredo myself. I said stay here. expecting you. You'll have no need of those. You see, I've arranged for an orderly surrender. I am only too glad to lay down our arms. I despised all the things I was forced to do. But the war ends. You are now in charge. Come, let's have a glass of wine, huh? If you only knew how I hated all the things I was forced to do, but the madman Mussolini is surrendering in Milan. And we can all be human beings again, eh? Now, why be emotional and waste good wine? You're lucky it's not your blood. So we're all to be human beings again, huh, Alfredo? Listen, I tell you, I'm a soldier. To follow orders, what I did, Mussolini commanded. He commanded what you did to Gianna, huh? He got on the telephone and he said, Alfredo, strip her and beat her. But you said, no, no, Ducci, I'm against such things. And he said, Alfredo, carry out my orders. Put her in the stoop room with the rats. Open the window and let the snow come in. But during the night, with her hands tied behind her, she's easy to put into that bad room. <laughs> we realize how little you had to do with your atrocities, Lieutenant. And if we only had M Mussolini here, we could deal with him directly. But since you were the one who carried out his orders, we'll have to punish him through you. Vito, take him and put him in the stoop room where we kept Gianna and leave him there until it's officially over. Officially? But that can be days, weeks. Lieutenant, you'll find the rats won't bite as long as you keep your feet moving. Why waste time, Luigi? Let's kill him now. No, we'll turn him over to the authorities when it's over. You think the war is over, huh? Well, the fascista will be back to you.
Mussolini, you must realize it's they who have the upper hand. You must make the sacrifice of surrender, painful though it is, to save Italy from further bloodshed. automatic refrigerator is the new RCA Whirlpool gas refrigerator. Julia Mead shows you why. Hello. As you know, the biggest problem with an ordinary refrigerator is ice cubes. Trying to get them out, struggling for the cubes, and then filling the tray again. But an RCA Whirlpool gas refrigerator makes and serves a steady supply of ice cubes automatically. There are no trays to fill empty or spill. This gas refrigerator gives you all the ice you want. And that's not all. You also get automatic defrosting, permanent silence, and a full 10-year warranty. This gas refrigerator comes in the loveliest colors, and it can be built into a wall. See the new RCA Whirlpool gas refrigerator with the automatic ice maker at your gas company or dealers. Gentlemen, gentlemen. This is General Raffaele Cadorna, Commander-in-Chief of the Partisan Forces, and Luigi Barotto Zinni and Pietro Vergani of the National Committee of Liberation, with Premier Mussolini, his Marshal Graziani, General of the Armies. Please, gentlemen, be seated. Excellency, these men are all professional communists. Is there no one here to represent those partisans who do not carry the hammer and sickle? Excellency, please inform the Duce that we come here peaceably. It is unwise to bait us. L let's try to conduct this meeting without, without a show of feelings, please. <laughs> please. And now, General, if you will, state your terms. Signor Mussolini's capitulation must be entirely unconditional. But the Committee of National Liberation has empowered me to guarantee that all his military forces will be treated as prisoners of war and in accordance with the international conventions. The fascist families will suffer no harm. And members of the diplomatic corps will be accorded proper diplomatic rights. Excellency, this palace must be the place of surrender. Granted. Granted. And they must guarantee that I will be interned here in Milan, in this palace, under your personal protection, until my trial. Granted. Granted. I can have the terms of surrender drawn up while you wait. Unless uh, Marshal Graziani has something to say. Only one thing, sir. Our treaty with the Germans forbids us making a unilateral surrender. Don't have to worry. We received a report this morning the Germans are surrendering too. <laughs> that's a lie. Hitler wouldn't negotiate a peace behind my back. That's not like Hitler. <laughs> what Borotorzini tells you is fact. At this very moment, the Fuhrer has entombed himself in the bunker of his chancellery. But all of his generals are surrendering. You know anything about this, Excellency? Is it true, this uh, surrender? Yes. So we betrayed by everyone? German slaves, that's what we are. I'll have to report to my cabinet. Mussolini, uh, you know that. I can't do anything without their consent. I'll be back in one hour. Can we postpone this meeting for one hour? Is that all right with you? We will wait right here, but beyond the hour, we can no longer guarantee his safety. Thank you. Luce. Luce. I urge you in the name of God. Leave the Almighty out of this, Cardinal.
find yourself a young man to dance with. This one's too old. <laughs> Good boy, dear. Oh. Hello, Luigi. Why don't we waste time with this Alfredo, huh? Let's kill him now. Why? Why? You don't think he deserves to be killed? Hey, Vito. If he had put up a fight, I would have been the first to shoot him. Now we got him locked up. They'll come for him, they'll try him, they'll find him guilty, and they'll kill him. Hey, wait. We turn him over. What guarantee have you got that they'll kill him, huh? No, Luigi. The only way to be sure is if we do it ourselves. Look, Vito, I'm not a judge and you're not the executioner. This directive says we are. All fascists known by the captors to have committed capital crimes will be automatically judged guilty and eliminated without further process. Hey, you're a member of us. Come on, what is that? That's a communist directive. That's not the law. We've been following the partisan directives all through the war, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, but they were military directives. Yes, so is this. It's the same thing. Don't you understand, Luigi? The terrible thing this man has done. What about Gianna, huh? I tell you, Luigi, the directive is right. Kill him. Kill him all. Vito, Vito, if we kill like that, isn't that the fascist way? You have to fight fire with fire, Luigi. Yeah. Wipe out the bad ones. All right. You don't want to be in on it. Let us do it, huh? I tell you, Luigi, I hate that man so much my mouth turns to copper every time I look at him. Vito, haven't we killed enough, huh? All right, it was necessary and we did it. But now, just to kill out of revenge. Look, I don't sleep nights, do you? All right. We all suffered. But I don't see Gianna's scars anymore. I don't see her scars anymore. Well, I do, Luigi. I see them very clearly. I'm sorry, Luigi. I can't fool myself like you do. Am I wrong, Gianna? Should I be more vindictive about you? No, 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 no. I just want it all to end so we can have a quiet time. I'm so sick of the war, so sick in my bones of it. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> oh. Oh. I love you, Gianna. I love you very much. I marry you now, this minute you're my wife. But darling, darling, do you really not see? I mean, or was it just talk for you, darling? You know me better than that, huh? I'm not ugly. You're beautiful. You're absolutely beautiful. Even if I'm not, you make me believe I am. The Americans will slow down this morning, but they're making good time now. How good? Will they be here tonight? That will be impossible. Luigi. What do you find? There's a crowd forming in the Piazza della Repubblica. They're lighting torches. Every street corner is alive. Milan will explode any minute. Where's Zervino with the money? He's holding us up. See if you can find Zervino. You two, look for him. Luigi, I spoke to Signora Mussolini. She and the children have already left for Monza. Good. Did you give her the name of the villa? Yes, I told her you'd phone her tonight. Fine. Zerbino, what's been keeping you? This is a matter of $60 million, uh, Duce. It takes time to assemble these things. Here are two of the cases. What is that? Gold. Gold, the strength of an army. What is this? Rings. Wedding rings. For the war with Ethiopia, Duce, you asked the wives uh, to uh, contribute their wedding bands. Yes, I know, but we still have them. You never issued orders. Orders? Does nothing happen without the Duce? Take that down to my car, hurry up, and take the files. Load everything carefully. Is it wise to run, Duce? Is it what a great statesman should do? I, a statesman? I'm not a statesman. I'm a mad poet. But wouldn't you be better off to stay and face them? How can I hand myself to that pig, Cadorna? Is that a finale? Is that a way to ring down the curtain? I'll tell you something of us to Hitler and me. History will regard as the greatest, the one who dies the grandest death. Death, Duce. 
You expect to die? I'm talking about avoiding death, not seeking it. Death. I hate death. A cheap prostitute that sells herself to anybody. What kind of a death would it be on Cadorna's gallows? Or in the hands of those gloating Americans, if they think they can exhibit me like a monkey in the Tower of London or in a cage at the Madison Square Garden, they're deceiving themselves. I have never feared death. And even at this stage of my life, I would rather live one day as a lion than a hundred years as a sheep. But maybe you are right. Maybe escape is just an illusion. Perhaps I'd better give myself to Cadorna and get it over with. If I go forward, follow me. If I retreat, kill me. Which is the retreat, Duce? To escape to Switzerland or to surrender? Surrender is the ultimate retreat. Escape, I'll go to Switzerland. Bovolini! No one knows my route of travel, not even I. I'll invent it as I go along. I don't want to risk any betrayal. I don't want a kiss from one of those Judases in the courtyard. Bovolini! Duce. There's some business at the prison. I don't want the Allies to find one of those partisan pigs alive. More than a hundred men there, Duce. All of them? All of them. Tucci, wait. Will that be all, sir? Yes, that will be all. all right. Everyone into your cars. The Duce is coming. You better start your engines. We've just been down the line. Fifteen cars, each one of them like a bank board. You know, it's interesting to see which officials choose wives and which choose mistresses. But Aku has both, his wife and his mistress. Well, he was always the most practical one in the cabinet, <laughs> wasn't he? <laughs> Partisans begin. Strange. Around here, the streets are deserted. Not a partisan anywhere. They're making our departure easy for us. Don't you know that old saying? For the enemy who is fleeing, build bridges of gold. You know that old poem? Farewell, farewell to Duce. All right, let's go. I'll recite it in the car. Duce. 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 Don't go, Duce. Don't go. You are making a mistake. Don't go. And now a word from our alternate sponsor of Act One, Kimberly Clark. Swell party, Judy. Thank you, Johnny. And the food's the greatest. I'm so glad. Oh, Mom got those paper napkins that always slide off your lap. Pardon me, sir. Hey, it's Manners the Butler. Isn't he adorable? Your party will be more enjoyable with Kleenex table napkins. They won't slide off your lap. Hey, great. Yes, sir. They cling like cloth. And miss, Kleenex napkins now come in this new table server box. Just fold back in the center and you get two napkin servers. One to put on the buffet table and one in reserve. How handy. Mmm, and they're so soft. Strong, too. And Kleenex table napkins really do. Clean like cloth. After station identification, we will return to Act Two of The Killers of Mussolini, written especially for Playhouse 90 by A.E. Hutchner, based on the many diaries, accounts, and reports of the last days of Benito Mussolini. This is the CBS Television Network. Playhouse 90, Act 2 of The Killers of Mussolini, brought to you by Allstate Insurance Companies. And did they mention their destination? No, General. Only that it was north. All right, all right. 
We can intercept them in an hour. I don't think so, General. I don't think we want them in an hour. Is Colonel Tedesco upstairs? Yes, sir. Send them down. What do you mean? Sometimes you play a fish a long way out before you land him, don't you, General? I'm not a fisherman. Actually, this way is better for us. Colonel Tedesco, today Mussolini withdrew a treasure of 60 million. We want that treasure to disappear. We're to be powerful now when it counts the most the Communist Party must be rich. I didn't want Mussolini to surrender here under the Cardinal's eyes because then he surrenders the treasure and it goes back in the Italian treasury. No, it's better to let him get north. Well, not too far north. It's your responsibility, Colonel, to see that he does not reach Switzerland. Boratosini, and if he gets to Switzerland, then what? Then we lose a fish. That's a risk all fishermen take. But if we land him north, General, think of that. How easy it is for 60 million to disappear in one of those hill towns. Let's alert all of our commanders in the north, General. Mussolini is clever. Tedesco. This is the most likely route. Como to the north. They're not receiving, Marshal. There's no answer to our message. Is that the same as before? Yes, Hitler ending over the short wave. He dies like a cheap carpenter. Duce, this just arrived by courier out of Domodossola. On way to Menaggio with armor and regiment of 5,000 black shirts. Pavolini. How far is Menaggio? About three hours from here. Do you know what that means? 5,000 black shirts. Who can stop us then? I knew I shouldn't surrender. I knew that something would come up. It always does. It always has, hasn't it? Yes, Duce. It always has. We will leave for Menaggio as soon as it gets light. Duce. Unless you wish to command me, I'd prefer to remain here in Como. The Americans have bypassed Milan. They'll be here soon. I'll surrender to them. I... I just don't want to go any further. So... Marshal Graziani, commander of the armies, wishes to capitulate. The soldiers approach and the general runs. What bravery, what courage. Benito, a general to be a general must believe. Well, I no longer believe, Benito. I'm unreliable, so I remove myself. I am not deserting you. I'm only protecting you. Villa Castelli. We're looking for the Duce. What flag? Spanish. Identify yourself. I'm the Spanish ambassador. My sister wishes to see the Duce. Ah, oh, signorina, I'm sorry I did not recognize you. I will lead you. Come, come. I kiss you and embrace you and the children too. Yo Benito. Read it back to me. All of it. Signora Rachel Mussolini, Villa Montero Como. Dear Rachel, here I am in the last phase of my life and at the last page of my book. Perhaps we two will not see each other again, and for that reason, I am writing you this letter. I ask your pardon for all the wrong which I may have done you. But you know that for me, you have been the only woman that I have truly loved. This I swear to you before God in this supreme moment. I do not know where my destiny will take me, but you and the children must get to the Swiss frontier. I worry about the children. 
Anna has such great need of you. And Romano, they are still so young. You know how much I love them. I kiss you and embrace you and the children, too. Here, Benito. Yeah, that's the hardest thing of all. Your children, your wife. Yes, Duce. I can imagine. No, you can't. Nobody can. Duce. I'm sorry to intrude, but, uh, but she's here. What? La signora Clara Petacci. Benito! Oh, thank you, Benito, Benito. Are you mad? I sent you to Spain. I couldn't go. Are you that anxious to die? You know how much trouble I had getting that plane for you? No, you go. Do as you're told. No, Benito, my place is here with you. You need me. I need you. What do I need? What do I need? The trouble of worrying about you. Another life to worry about. That's the way it's always been with us. You do as you please and you try to run me. Please, it won't work. Please. It won't work. Now, either you go back yourself or I'll get one of the soldiers to take you. So take your choice. <laughs> yes, that's what we need. Tears. Hey, where's Paolini? It's 12 o'clock. The partisans will find me before he does. 5,000 men, don't you? Give him time. Time, time. Who gives me time? I came because I love you. I didn't want you to be alone. My place is here helping you. What good is Spain? What do I care about safety? I'd rather be one day with you than be ten years safe in Spain. I'm glad to see you, Claretta. No, you're not. I thought you were good. You're really, not. I am. Happy I am. I was happy only for your safety. Hey, how did you get here? My hmm? brother and his family. He's disguised as a Spanish ambassador. <laughs> we all have forged passports and we fly a Spanish flag from the car. Why did you give up that beautiful escape I had for you? You can't be alone. You don't understand. Claretta, if they take me, they take me to kill me. Then you mustn't die alone. We can't wait for Pavolini. It's stupid to wait. We'll go to Switzerland. Basti. We're going to try for Switzerland. Yes, Duce. I'll alert the convoy. No, no, no. There'll be no convoy. Just the three cars that are here and the people at the villa. That's all. And desert the others? No, no. We desert nobody. From now on, everyone is his own commander. I'm not the Pied Piper or a savior. I'm just a man trying to save himself. Nothing more. Please get the cars ready. Listen, uh, we have reports on fascist movement along all the main roads, so keep your men alert. What about Mussolini? Uh, nothing yet. Uh, we know he's up here, but the command seems to think that he'd rather hide than run. So they're starting a house-to-house -house search of all the hill towns. I wish he'd run. Oh, how I wish he'd run. What a beautiful sight, huh? The Duce, running along here while I shoot him in a spot that he's the biggest. <laughs> and that's one target that you, even you could hardly miss. Yes, look up! <laughs> hey, come on! Come on, take your position. Let's stand around here. Hey, Duce, what's the matter? Come on, Duce. Come on, Duce. Come on, How far to the Swiss border? 31 miles. That near? Let's now make a mistake. Basti, you take that first car and scout the road beyond Poletta. Mm -hmm. All right, these two cars will stay here. Hurry up. Yes, don't you?
What happened? Where are the others? Oh, God. Roadblock. Hundreds of partisans. The grapes of Tantalus. What, Duchi? To be this close and have it snatched back. Get in the car. We'll return to Menaggio. Loretta, you go back to Menaggio, find your brother, and start for Spain immediately. This is an order, and you better obey. No, Benito. Didn't you say everyone's his own commander while I am mine? With you, I command always, and don't you forget it. I'll go to my brother, but I won't go to Spain. All right, arrange your own funeral, but leave me out of it, you hear? Leave me out of it! Allstate, the company that cuts red tape and high cost out of insurance, presents Ed Reimers. Good evening. You know, they say it's mighty hard to impress a Texan. But tonight's Allstate true story is about a Texas car owner who is really impressed with his Allstate insurance. His name, Mr. C.R. Abston of Houston, Texas, an Allstate policyholder for the past eight years. Now, not long ago, Mr. Abston was driving his 57 Chevrolet north from Houston to Dallas. What happened, Mr. Abston? Led about 30 miles outside of Dallas, I got involved in an accident. My car was still drivable, so I kept going to a Chevy garage in Dallas and called Allstate. Ninety minutes after I hung up that phone, I was back behind the wheel of my car again with the damage all repaired. A hundred and seventy-seven dollars worth. That's fast, even for Texas. Now, what happened in Mr. Abston's case points out how Allstate can settle most out-of-town claims fast. Now, when Allstate first received his call, an Allstate adjuster was sent to the garage to inspect his car. At the same time, Allstate and Dallas teletyped the Houston office to verify Mr. Abston's coverage. Houston's answer came through immediately, and by the time the adjuster arrived at the garage, another phone call that authorized him to okay and pay for the repairs on the spot. The garage worked fast, so in the same length of time, it's taking to watch Playhouse 90 tonight. Mr. Abston's claim was settled, and his car fixed to his satisfaction. Allstate's new 7,300-mile telegraph system, the most extensive private telegraph system used by any insurance company, is now in full operation throughout the United States and Canada. So claims information can flash back and forth instantly. Allstate uses every modern method to help make sure wherever you drive, you're in good hands with Allstate. One way or another, he must make up his mind. No. You've got to talk oh, to him. You'll be unreasonable. Because... Pavolini! Dolce! Pavolini, Pavolini, you have come. You've brought them the black shirts. Where are they? Take me to them. Do you know what you've done? 5,000 black shirts. You have given us new hope, Pavolini. A chance to fight, Pavolini. You're a hero. Dolce, I'm afraid you're misinformed about the number. Not 5,000. How many? Nine. 9,000 men. You hear that? <laughs> Surrender, will I? I'll have that Cadona on his knees. Not 9,000, don't you? Nine. Just plain not. Nine men. I tried to recruit. Everywhere I went, men are burning their shirts. Black fog hangs over Italy. I'm a commander of nine men? Is this what I do for my country? Mussolini, the greatest hero of our history since Caesar. Can I be taken leading a column of nine tarnished men? Do you have any advice for me, any hope? Is the line open to Milan? Yes. Cardinal Schuster's palace in Milan. Dolce! Nazis! Huh? All over the street. Dolce! Dolce! A German motorized column is passing through on its way to the Reich. I took the liberty of bringing the commander to see you. Major Kurtz! His Excellency, Premier Benito Mussolini. Dolce! Major. 
You're on your way to Germany. Do you pass through Switzerland? Yes, sir. If my men can hold out. We have been away for a long time, and we are very tired. Major, we would like to attach ourselves to your column. Well, uh, you understand, Duce. It's flattering that you entrust yourself to us. But the truth is, if we were to incorporate Italian vehicles, it might complicate our passage from here on up. Oh, but, but there's nothing up there that would attack a column like yours. They're just small partisan bands. They would I have... wish to emphasize, sir, my men are very tired and discouraged. Their morale is such I wouldn't like to entrust a person of your standing to their courage. It's a responsibility I cannot take. Then I will take the responsibility, Major. Right now, I trust the Germans more than I do the Italians. All right, sir. How long will it take you? You go on. We'll follow behind you. Vehicles. How many? Fifteen. All right, men, take your positions. Take your position. Take it. Major Kurtz commanding. Look, I would like to avoid any combat. I don't think you would want us as prisoners, do you? That depends, Major. Sure, you know that a German uh, safe conduct has been granted by your command. I'm aware of that, Major. Look, Captain, the war is over. What's the sense of shooting at each other? All we are trying to do is get back to Germany. You seem to have taken on some excess baggage, Major. That baggage is expendable, Captain. Then I don't think there would be any objection to your going on your way as long as you leave the fascists with us. They are all yours, Captain. There's one other condition, Major. We must insist that you and your men surrender your arms before you travel through any more Italian territory. You may have them. I don't think my men want to use them anymore anyway. Military men? An ally? You throw us over like dogs just to save your own skin? If you were in Germany with us on your tail, you would do the same. No. I'm a soldier, Major. I'm not a politician. I don't surrender till the ammunition is gone. Oh, yes. Here we Here lies Major Kurz, who fought gallantly for the Italian fascists. Is that it? No, sir. Not for me. It's a very unattractive epithet. Would there be anything else, Captain? You will proceed down this road to Danga, where my men will inspect your vehicles and take your weapons. Goodbye, sir. And good luck. I'm sorry my bravery doesn't meet your approval. I think you speak of cowardice, Major. I wouldn't mention bravery if I were you.
My wife and sister. We are returning to Spain through Germany. I see. And I am traveling with this convoy for protection. Yes. yes. Well, uh, your papers seem to be in order. Ambassador to the Italian Social Republic at Rome. Huh? Yes, do you wish to see my passport? Oh, no. No, 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 Signor. That won't be necessary. Solamente yo quería que me diga usted en qué parte de España nació y cuánto tiempo ha estado el embajador en Roma. Huh? Uh, tell me, Mr. Ambassador, in what language do you communicate your report to the Spanish government? Huh? All right. Out! Out of the car, all of you. Oh, no. Lock him up in the complete. Oh, oh, no. And take the women over to the city hall. Oh. Uh -huh. Fancy boots for a corporal, don't you think? Yeah, they sure are. Hey, you! Uh, give him a break. He's drunk. He got hold of some of your red vine. Hey! Hey, wake up! Hey! What's wrong? What did you see? Mussolini. What? He said, don't you himself? You're crazy. In a Nazi uniform? There. You there, wake that man up. Uh, he's drunk. You have two seconds to get him out of the truck. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. the people of Dongo that I have arrived. They will rejoice I have done much for this town. Eugene, you were quite right. The people of Dongo are indebted to you. Your name? I am Captain Luigi Neri. 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 And your people are loyal? Yes, Duce. I will make this my headquarters. They have even erected a plaque to you, Duce. Hey. Marble in Boston, gold letters. Come, it's right here on the wall. Let me show it to you. To the memory of the men of Dango who were killed against this wall, April 10th, 1944. 
They were killed by your soldiers, Duce. Our mayor, our judge, our police chief. Your executioner read a military order bearing their names. And at the bottom of that order was your signature. By the order of Benito Mussolini, Il Duce. We are indebted to you, Duce. How many things like that were done over my signature without my knowledge? Hmm? My countrymen, do you believe that I would sign such a thing? Yes! Yes! Well, I controlled as much as I could. But there were bound to be some men who'd do things like that. But am I to blame for the acts of all people You let the lions into the arena. And now you express, express surprise when you hear Christians being killed. Look around you, don't you? Do you see how happy these people are to see you? Am I your duchy? Hang them! Kill them! Kill them! Kill them! Even Allstate insurance can't put a stop to all driving hazards. For example, we can't do anything about the early honker. Nor can we help you with this one. And nothing, nothing can stop a blowout whose time has come. But when you need claim service, that's when Allstate can really help. With Allstate, help is as near as the nearest phone. Allstate cuts red tape to give fast claim service. Lots of times we write you a check as soon as we've seen the car. And, depending on the state where you live and how you use your car, you may save up to 38% from rates of most other companies. Isn't that right? So see an Allstate agent at your Sears store, Allstate Insurance Center, or just phone us. You're in good hands with Allstate. After station identification, we will return with Act Three of The Killers of Mussolini, starring Nehemiah Persoff, Harry Gardino, Michael Ansara, Ilka Windisch, John Daner, Eduardo Cianelli, Lawrence Dobkin, Frank Puglia, and introducing Erica Remberg. This is the CBS Television. Playhouse 90, Act Three of The Killers of Mussolini. Brought to you by Renault and the Dauphine. And now a few words about the Renault Dauphine, the car with a city horn and a country horn. First word. Chic. Translation, chic. The Dauphine is French, smart and fashionable. Second word. Sensible. Sensible, compact for easy maneuverability in traffic and perfect parking when you get there. Third word. Spacieux. Spacious. Plenty of places for people, packages, and luggage in the Dauphine. Fourth word. Economic. Economical. Low, low initial cost. For example, $1,645 New York. And up to 40 miles on a gallon. Fifth word. Joyeux. Fun. The Renault is the car that makes driving fun again. The last word. Renault. Dauphine. Of course. See it and drive it now. There are more than 800 coast-to-coast -coast sales, service, and parts headquarters. The National Committee of Liberation is now in plenipotentiary session. The people of Italy versus Benito Mussolini in absentia. General Cadorna, place the standard of the fascisti as proxy. <laughs> Whereas Benito Mussolini apprehended in the town of Dongo by the partisans of the 52nd Brigade, this committee will now sit in judgment on his alleged crimes. Whereas Benito Mussolini did conspire to suspend the functioning of the government of the state of Italy and to surrender its sovereign powers to the government of Germany and to its enemies within, therefore let him be charged with a high crime of treason. Is there anyone to speak for the proxy? The proxy stands mute. Mr. Chairman, I move to vote on the charge. 
You will each vote guilty or not guilty of the crime as charged. Guilty. 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 It is the finding of this committee that the defendant, Benito Mussolini, tried here in absentia, is hereby found guilty as charged of the high crime of treason and to suffer the penalty of death. Colonel Tedesco, you are directed to proceed to the town of Dongo to take charge of the prisoner on behalf of this committee. General Cadorna will now affix the black ribbon to the proxy, thereby signifying service of the judgment on the defendant. Next case, People versus Alessandro Pavolini. The clerk will read the list of charges as they have been compiled. At a just and legal trial in absentia before the Freedom Committee in Milan, you have all been found guilty of the crimes as charged and sentenced to death before the firing squad now assembled. But I understood the trial was to be here. The trial was held in Milan. We're ready to carry out the execution. Luigi. Sorry, phone. And these men must be brought to me one at a time to give them an opportunity to prepare for death. One at a time? That would take all afternoon. But there are ten. No, no, we don't have time for that kind of ritual. Just grant them all absolution together, all at one time. What kind of executioner are you who won't give a man an extra minute for his soul? What you don't understand is that we're dealing with men who traded away their souls a long time ago. What do you think a minute of last minute muttering will achieve for them? Sir, I am Calistri. You're making a mistake with me. I'm not political. I'm only Mussolini's pilot. I did nothing but fly his personal airplane. I never dropped a bomb. I never fired a machine gun. I don't want to die. Is that a thing to be killed for? Sir, I hold the gold medal for bravery. I'm not afraid to die. But as Kalistri says, those of us who are military, we had nothing to do with the political. We carry out our orders like you. We're not responsible for Mussolini's crime. It's useless. You're wasting words. I have orders, and I couldn't exempt any of you if I wanted to. All right, let's go. All of you who wish to receive absolution, kneel down and make a perfect act of contrition. Ego vos absolvo ab omnibus censuris et peccatis in nomine patris et fili et spiritus sancti. nothing to do with that. It was all that demon Hitler. I fought him. God, how I fought him, but he held a gun to my head. You doubt what I say? Well, it's true. Not to save my skin. It's true. I... I had to make those speeches on the Piazza Venezia. 
on that balcony, all around me, below and back, Nazi SS men all around. Hundreds of them, snakes of his sick mind, so close to me I could feel their hands on my throat. I begged him to let me go. Hitler, I said, let us out of the war. Give my people back to me. You know what he said? You quit Benito, and I use poison gas on all of you. Don't you see? One false move, and he kills my beautiful people. How could you blame me? That I stood him up so long. I'm a hero. I'm a hero. You should honor me. I'm a hero. Goodbye, old friends. You were loyal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. is done. Now we have two items to dispose of, Captain. The treasure you've collected and Mussolini. Mussolini's upstairs. The treasure will be returned to Milan by trucks tomorrow. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. The committee's evolved a plan to make the treasure disappear and they want you to carry it out. Now, you will have all of the treasure taken to your house and put under the guard of the best men in your brigade. We want loyal partisans of the party who fought gallantly during the war, that kind. You will come to Milan to report the treasure to the state. But in your absence, your house will be attacked and the treasure will just mysteriously disappear. And what about my men? They'll be found murdered in your house. Well, certainly communists couldn't have taken the treasure. They wouldn't kill their own heroes, now would they? This will be a mystery that no one will ever solve. You're crazy, you know that? You're crazy! Kill good men who fought their hearts out, huh? Well, you'd send these men into battle, wouldn't you? That has nothing to do with wait, this! Wait, wait, now just wait. You've had many men killed on dangerous missions, right? Yes! All right, then this is just one more mission. This is murder, just plain murder. We're sacrificing a few men for the good of us all. I see. And making the communists wealthy is for the good of us all, huh? I know you, Tedesco. And I think that if you have to kill good men to make the Communist Party rich, then I think your Communist Party stinks. All right, Captain. There's no need to get so worked up. Fact is, you disagree with the committee's plan. Yes. All right, then. I'll take the matter up with them again and present your point of view. Now I take Mussolini. <laughs> May I see your written orders to take Mussolini? <laughs> there are no written orders. I was sent here for Mussolini. Then I'm sorry, Colonel. Without written orders, it's the responsibility of the 52nd Brigade to see that Mussolini gets to Milan for his trial. What's happened to you, Neri? You earned a great reputation as a freedom fighter. I fought against what I hated, Colonel, the fascistic. Now that you've won and we have our freedom? I'm not going to throw it away. Well, Captain, I suggest that we, we meet again in the morning after you've had a good night's sleep. At the moment, I don't think you quite realize where your actions may lead you. Yeah, well, you may be right, Colonel. I'll meet with you at nine. Nine. Where are you taking me? To a farmhouse in Azano. Why? To retain control of you. Why do you bandage my face? Because if you were recognized along the way, there's a good chance you'd be lynched. Oh, I see. Captain. Jim, is he ready yet? The ambulance is waiting. We've captured a girl today in a Spanish automobile. Yes, we did. Is she all right? 
I think so. Would you take a message? Tell her that I miss her very much. Now, this message from our alternate sponsor, Ansco. He's home. Home on leave. Home with stories of jets and adventure. A never-to-be-forgotten moment. And Dad's caught it with his new Ansco Lancer camera. The A-plus, easy-to-use camera from Ansco. Let's look into these A-plus features that make picture-taking so simple and sure. This pointer here, adjust your Lancer for perfect results in every kind of light. And just by moving this red dot, you get the right focus for scenic, group, or portrait pictures. In fact, if you can read, you can take great pictures with the Ansco Lancer camera. Beautiful color snapshots or slides, or needle-sharp black and white shots. The complete Lancer outfit, everything you need for taking great pictures, only $19.95. Whether it's color films, black and white films, cameras, or projectors, if it's from Ansco, you know it's A+. I've got a message for you. From Mussolini. Mussolini? Why should he send me a message? Listen, it'll save us a lot of time if you'd stop playing that game with me. I just talked to him. But you're him. mistaken. I have a Spanish passport and I'm Spanish. I just talked to him and he said, go to Clareta Petacci and tell her I'm all right. And tell her goodbye. Goodbye? Is he going away? Oh, you do know the Duce, eh? How is he? Is he all right? Tell me, please. He is all right. You are concerned about him, aren't you? Why do you think I'm here, not somewhere safe? I love him. I love him. You? Love? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. A mistress love. That's just as big as her lover's bank account. Do you think I'll sacrifice my life for that great life he gave me? Some life. But I've seen the Villa Camelucci that he built for you in Rome. And the Jews in that trail of yours. Oh, what does that prove? That I love luxury? Yes, I do. What kind of a life did I have? Hidden away. Waiting. I was always waiting. I loved Benito as a man. Just as a man. And now, in the name of love, please let me go free, eh? No. But there is a favor I would like to ask you. What's that? Whatever happens to him now, I want it to happen to me too. He needs me. If he must die, I want to die with him. Surely as a woman you understand. Whether you hate us or not, a man you love shouldn't have to face death alone. That's all I can do for him now. Why deny me? I offer to die. Clarita. Clarita, I'm so glad you came. You're right, I need you, I need you. It's always in my life I need you. You're the only woman I ever loved, Clarita. We'll have at least this one night. This one last night. Don't say that. Have you given up hoping? You mustn't let them see that. Would they kill my ministers and preserve me? And are crazy and confused when they're killing. How do you like our palace? It's a nice old room. It's cold. A little warm in. Benito? Huh? Will we die? 
If it hasn't happened yet, then the chances are good. So many times they've tried to assassinate me. Maybe I am invincible. Maybe a miracle will happen. My fortune teller always complimented me on my lifeline. Well, that's that. Luigi. Darling, why are you worried? You should be relieved. It's all over. Is it all over, Jan? Is it all over? I fought with men who... Men who I grew up with. Who hated the fascists as I do. Now we won. But what did we win, Lutz? This Tedesco. Vito, my friend Vito. He was a baker. Now all of a sudden he's a, he's a communist. What does he know about politics? Communist directors in his head. Uh, I just want to get away from them. I want to get away from them. I want to spend some time with you. We'll believe in ourselves. That's all there is left. All the rest is filth. How many times we risk our lives and how it ends. Part us in a dirty word. Luigi, take your mind away from that. Think of us. Think of our wedding. And the wedding night. Think of... I'm thinking of the wedding night. You see? Your face has already lost its worry. When you look at it, my face becomes a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> You're very poetic tonight, Captain. That may be my new trade. Luigi Neri, poet. And lover. Now, poet, do you know how late it is? Huh. Tomorrow we'll turn all this stuff over. And we're through with it. Thank God, thank God. Hey, Vito. Captain. I have a message for you. What's the matter, huh? What is it? The National Committee of Liberation has this day found Captain Luigi Neri guilty of acts of defiance constituting high treason against the partisan cause, and herewith sentences him to death. Vito, what? Vito! Vito! Shall I start loading the treasure now? Some guards. My mother baked some fresh bread for you. <laughs> you are a partisan, and your mother bakes bread for me. She's an old woman, and to her, you will always be Duce. Come quickly. What? We've come to save you. Who are you? I'm Colonel Tedesco. Marshal Graziani sent me. Graziani? He gave up to the Americans. No, no, he did not, Duce. He's coming to pick you up tonight at the Villa Belmonte. An hour later, you'll be on Swiss soil. But please, there's no, there's no time. Hurry.
Quella del Monte Duce. It's locked. By order of the high command of the Freedom Corps, I do justice in the name of the Italian people. No! Get out of the way. Oh, how does he done to you? You want to die too? What does he done to you? Tell her, Duce, tell her what you've done to us. Give us a speech. No, no speech. Then we'll let the people speak. No! It's Jan, we don't. <coughs> so, a reprieve, Excellency. Give you a chance to make another speech. No, still nothing to say? Please, Colonel. <laughs> Please. Finally, the speech, Guido. Remember that speech. Please. Oh, please. That was how they died, against a wall in Azzano. But many people remember pictures taken at a Milan filling station. This was a few days later, when the bodies had been carted back to Milan to quiet the skeptics who didn't believe that the Duce was really dead. It would be hard to say, between Mussolini and Hitler, who really did die the grander death. Now a word from our alternate sponsor of this portion of the show, Camel Cigarettes. Speaking for Camels, James Daly. If you're smoking a cigarette right now, now is the perfect time to ask yourself, are you smoking more these days but enjoying it less? If that's the case, change to Camel, a real cigarette. Why Camel? Chief Officer Robert Valentine has the answer. Full satisfaction in each and every smoke. The kind of satisfaction only a Camel can give you. Valentine's job is getting the cargo safely aboard and safely stowed away on the fair line ship, African Enterprise. He always enjoys a camel, at dinner or on deck. He likes the rich tobacco flavor of this cigarette, the smooth, easygoing mildness of camels. He knows the best tobacco makes the best smoke. The camel blend of costly Turkish and domestic tobaccos has never been equaled, so it's easy to understand why camel is the favorite cigarette in all America. How about you? Smoking more lately but enjoying it less? Then have a real cigarette. Have a camel. And now to tell you about next week's Playhouse 90, Lee J. Cobb. Next week, Playhouse 90 will present Project Immortality, written especially for this series by Loring Mandel. The job of Project 0260, Department of Defense, was to perfect the means of taking the pattern of a man's mind and duplicating it in a computer. It's not a dream, it's not the hallucination of a science fiction editor, it's being done today. In Project Immortality, I portray Lawrence Dona, great scientist. Appearing with me will be Kenneth Haig as Martin Schramm, who believed science the answer to every question in today's world. Gusti Huber as Eva, who because she understood her husband completely, was able to share him with the world. Michael Landon as Arthur, who was unable to cope with his own father's greatness. And Patty McCormick as Ketty, a girl to whom genius was perfectly normal. Fielder Cook will direct, Peter Cortner will produce this unusual and provocative drama. Next week on Playhouse 90, Project Immortality.
Snyder, brought to you tonight by Allstate, the company with more than 4 million policyholders who have discovered that you're in good hands with Allstate. By Renault and the more than 800 Renault sales, service, and part headquarters from coast to coast. And by your gas company, in cooperation with gas producers, pipeline companies, and gas appliance and equipment manufacturers, who bring the modern miracles of gas service to your home. Playhouse 90, the only weekly dramatic hour-and-a-half program in television. This is Dick Joy speaking. Playhouse 90 is a CBS Television Network production.